Tongues and Tails and Unicorn Darts. Here with Carl Anderson. Carl, you going, mate? You all right? Not too bad, buddy. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Right, we can't go anywhere without starting off, about talking the 130 plus average, 134. Come on. Oh, what happened there? Uh, mate, what can you say? You know, just went in. Um, when you're on form, you're on form. It was one of them times when you think, if, if I can bring my practice form onto the board, I'd do anything then, mm. and, it, and it happened. And it wasn't just for one, two legs, it was for the whole match. So um, I was quite happy with it, you know. But how did, when you're playing that and you're playing so well, are you changing anything in your head? Are you thinking, I must be breaking all sorts of records here, or are you just trying to concentrate on what you normally do? As I said, man, it's like you're on a practice board. You really don't give what, what Terry was throwing that match. Mm. I didn't really care. You know, I was watching his every shot, but it didn't, really, it didn't really hit me to think that he was hitting good scores. Even when he got the, the leg that he got was a one 2 one check checkout, out, wasn't it? To take, I was on 46, so I was, in my head I was thinking, I'm coming back for 46, and Terry took out ball. And, to be quite honest, I was pretty dirty because he, he got a he got a leg. You know, nothing against Terry, but I just wanted to. I knew I was playing well, and I thought, well, I can do it probably well this game. I mean, you, in on all of this, probably not, it's not going to happen again like that. But you must now have the confidence to to think, well, if I can do that, if I can just even find an average slightly lower than that and a bit more consistently, I can be anyone. That's it's it's it. You know, you, to prove that you can do it. You know, there's a lot of doubters when it came out on Twitter. Everyone was like, oh no, it didn't happen, but. You know, you just let them have their word and just sit back and smile. Well, I remember seeing it on Twitter as well and thinking to myself, wow. And, and, and even to an extent, maybe even thinking, surely not. But, and, and to you yourself, you must, as I said before, you must think to yourself, I can be anyone playing like that. Well, of course you can be anyone playing like that, but consistently you must think you can be anyone. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting that consistency happening. You know, um, it's all good throwing well averages like that, but you go back it up and the next game I was slightly down and Christian took advantage of that. But um, no, if we can get it all happening on the same day, I can't see why I can't win a couple of these events. We're getting through the year now. How have you assessed your year so far? We'll, we'll talk about the, the Worlds later on in, in the interview, but how do you assess your year so far? At the moment, I'm um, not too far from uh, the race for match play, so I'm, that's the first goal in hindsight. Um, get to match play, and everything probably follows after that. Um, I'm playing well enough to do it. It's, like I said, just a matter of getting it done. Yeah, but, as I mentioned, we talk about the Worlds now. Previously in, in, in December, you, you had a lot of media attention surrounding you and people were talking about you. And you were playing reasonably well. How do you assess that, that World Championship? Um, it, it was good to an extent. Um, a lot of people didn't know before, but my, I had a couple of family members pass away in the funerals the day of Andy Hamilton's game. Um, so there was a lot of things outside of darts that I was thinking about during the match. Um, just after I played against Andy, I went backstage and it all just came out. I was outside in tears and just wanted to be home. Um, but no, I played pretty much, I played well. There's no, there's no reason I shouldn't have taken it against Andy. Andy fought back hard and ran away with it as he does. Um, it's just all a bit of a learning curve for me too as well. Um, third year on that stage, I can't see why I can't get a bit further next year. Now you've had a bit more of the media attention as well. Do you think that'll set you up nicely for, for next year? Yeah, right. You know, like I'm coming from back home, not having much media attention to coming here and just getting hit with it every mm. week. You know, it's, it's, it's different. Um, but no, as I said, man, if you, you get used to that stuff, there's no point holding back. So we're in April now, leading up to the Worlds in December. What, what's the plan between now and then? Have you got any goals set up for yourself? Um, pretty much goals are to uh, just qualify for TV events, do well in on the floor and more Euro events because um, that's pretty much where most of the cash is, is Euro events and um, get through to them and you're pretty much on your way. A few more nine darters as well. Oh, you, can't, you, can't, you can't hold it out. I mean, um, when I just played against Alan Tabard and got my last nine, in the, in the 11th leg, I wired another one, so um, the, the form is pretty much there. It's just a matter of fact of um, just bringing it out on a day. Carl, top man. Thank you very much. Yeah. There you go. Tungsten Tails and Unicorn Darts giving you at the sharp end of World Darts.